Hey guys, uh, Christian from Eagle Metalworks here. We're gonna do a Chase Bay's power steering cooler and reservoir install on James's car. Um, first and foremost, we'll get everything ripped out. I'll kind of do uh, some kind of peeks in as to uh, those things coming apart. Uh, and then the kit we have is over here. Uh, so it comes with all new lines, uh, the cooler, a nice new reservoir, uh, this reservoir is baffled um, internally, so it should help uh, make sure it doesn't have any overflowing issues or anything like that. Uh, it comes with the brackets and your mounting hardware and stuff like that. All right, so first and foremost, you're going to pull your airbox, whatever style you have. This car had the OE st uh, style airbox in it. Um, next thing is going to be is get the fluid out of this thing. There's kind of two ways to do that. Uh, one is if you have a fluid sucker, you can get cheapy ones at like O'Reilly's or something like that. Um, my good friend gave me this, so it works really well. The other option is, is grab a catch pan like this, uh, slide it under the car and pull one of the lower uh, power steering hoses that go to the pump, preferably maybe the one that comes from the reservoir itself. Cause what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this reservoir off and we don't want a bunch of this fluid going into the alternator or the belt drive or any of that stuff. So just make sure you're covering your bases and make sure um, when you're pulling this stuff, you maybe get some rags in there so you don't get everything all dirty. This is my favorite part, just, oh yeah. <laughs> so the next part's gonna be get, loosen up this reservoir. You're gonna need a, a 13 mil socket. I grabbed a 12, don't be like me, grab the right one the first time. Uh, 13 mil socket, you're gonna do these two guys. They'll probably fall down in there, that's okay. Once you get those undone, you'll actually get more access to pulling out some more of that fluid. Some more of that fluid if you're in that, uh, if you're sucking it out this way. James's favorite part. Okay, yeah. Zoom in there. Then you'll just undo these two hose clamps. You probably will still get some fluid out of here. Um, it's kind of inevitable. Just do your best. You can see I got some rags under there to kind of try to catch some of that stuff. Looks like you did a pretty good job uh, draining it. Yeah, I mean, you're still gonna have some fluid in the bottom because there is that built-in internal filter, that stock reservoir. So like I said, just get some rags in there. Make sure you try to soak up as much as you can. So the next step's gonna be is gonna get these power steering cooler lines off. Um, they do have a built-in kind of quick disconnect on them. It's got this gray piece here. You just go in, you grab these and you push it in and then pull off. Sometimes what you have to do is you have to kind of push in, pull in, and then pull out. Um, and then you can get them off. They can be a little bit tricky. I've had to cut some off in the past because they don't want to come off. Just be careful if you have to. Got it. But you already, so you already got that one off. How yep. many are there? There's two of them. So you have that one, that one goes to the reservoir. And this next one comes from the power steering rack. So this one's a little bit harder. It's a little bit tighter to get to down in there. Um, so you might grab like if you have some angled pliers um, to grab those, or if you got some skinny fingers, not big fat ones like me, you'll probably be able to get in there. All right, so after you've done that, uh, one thing we went ahead and we did was pull the factory 
power steering cooler out of this area. Um, some You can leave it if you want, just make sure you clean it out and leave it in there, or we cut it. We cut it in a few different spaces and kind of loosened up the radiator and we're able to kind of fish it out of there. Um, and all the, the wonderful stock cooler that doesn't do a whole lot. Um, and we're going to replace that with that nice Chase Bays unit. Next thing you're going to want to do is you have this hose clamp, which is your feed hose for uh, that comes from the reservoir, and then this is your pressure line that goes to the power steering rack. Let's go ahead and undo both of those guys. There is going to be fluid that comes out of there, so make sure you have um, some sort of catch there to catch that. And then I like to let it just sit there and drain for a little while. I really don't like cleaning a lot of messes, so um, if you're in a rush, then you're going to be cleaning a lot of stuff after you're done. So, yeah, we'll hang out for a second, and then we'll pull the uh, lines off the rack back here. So you have two bolts here. Uh, one is going to be the cooler line that we undid up top already, and the other is the other end of this hose. Um, so we'll let that drain a little bit. We'll work on getting those out and then uh, We'll revisit uh, here in a, just a moment when we go to install everything. All right, cool. Let's hang out for a second All right, so just kind of a quick rundown on the hoses so you know where they're supposed to go uh, and Maybe you can label them or at least you can reference this video and know exactly where these hoses go um, so this hose is your power steering feed hose. It will go from the reservoir to the pump. This hose is your power steering pressure hose. It will go from the pump to the rack and pinion. This hose will go from the rack and pinion to your power steering cooler if you have that option selected. And then this is the return hose from the cooler to the reservoir. Once again, if you have the cooler selected as an option, um, this is for just the cooler setup. Uh, these brackets are to hold the cooler in place on the subframe and these bolts are, are to mount these brackets to the back of the cooler into these already pre-threaded holes. So the one important thing, this hose, this power steering feed hose has been revised. Um, you may see some hoses where they have just a slip on with a hose clamp. Uh, they have changed that design now. Uh, where they have a, a different fitting that slides over the flange with an o-ring. I'll show you that fitting. That fitting is on the flange down here. It is this right here. Um, it will slide over that. It does take a little bit of work. Uh, what I did is just made sure it was nice and clean. I took a little piece of scotch Bright, just kind of cleaned the flange up put a little bit of assembly lube on there um, and then uh, grabbed the hose, threaded it on the hose and kind of just pushed it on there. Gave it a good shove and it went over. Um, so you have the O-ring on there. The O-ring goes on this side and then we'll seal up against the feed line. Up here we have the uh, reservoir already installed. You'll have this black spacer here that comes with the kit. You'll install that spacer on the reservoir and then slide the reservoir up into the factory uh, power steering reservoir bracket and then tighten this 10 millimeter bolt down on the other side to snug up the reservoir inside that bracket. Now we're going to go ahead and install all the hoses. Uh, the next uh, area I'll show you is everything kind of loosely fit installed and then I'll run through exactly where everything is going and how it's routed. So we got all the lines in. Um, I set the reservoir a little bit higher. Um, just make sure you know it doesn't go any higher than you know the rest of the engine there. Uh, and just double check the hood closes and stuff. You can adjust the height of that, kind of make sure it all fits right. Um, so on this side, we got the this larger hose as we mentioned before is your feed hose. 
So we ran this back behind the alternator and then straight down to the pump. And then this is your uh, return line from the cooler. And then we'll go down below and I'll show you the rest of the lines. So this is that return line that's coming from the cooler here, which is being fed from the rack here. This short hose goes to the rack. And then this pressure line here uh, goes from the pump back to the rack. Um, and then I just threw a little zip tie here just to make sure this hose wasn't moving around a whole lot. And then the last thing here is mounting this uh, cooler. They have these provided brackets here. You loosen the power steering rack and pinion bolts and drop them down a bit. And then these brackets will slide in. One has like a 90 degree hook and one is straight. The 90 degree hook one is this one on the passenger side and the straight one on this end is on the driver's side. And then those just bolt in the back of the cooler. I recommend putting the brackets on before you try to mount this all together because it's gonna be kind of hard to get to these bolts back here. Uh, so just make sure the brackets are mounted to the cooler before you try to install it. Um, other than that, here we are. We're going to put some fluid in it, bleed it, and make sure everything uh, seals up good. Nice. Oh my gosh. So now what we're going to do is uh, we fill the reservoir here. Um, I like to just do, without the car running, turn the wheel back and forth a bunch of times, try to get as much air out of the system as we can. At that point, what we want to do after that is just kind of crank the car on just for like a second or two, let it pull some fluid, top it back off. Turn the wheel back and forth a bunch, turn the car on, let it suck down some fluid, fill it up and just kind of repeat that process until you don't see any more air bubbles or, uh, and you, you know, your power steering sounds okay like it should. Eva's going on the YouTube. Oh, see, she wants to rip the e-brake already. So should we be looking for air bubbles as you're doing this? Yeah, you can look inside the reservoir and see if there's anything happening. I just kind of like to do this as kind of like a priming option. Just gonna go ahead and take the helm on this operation. All right. Apparently you use the blinker to get the first thing, but. She learned from the best. So now you're just making sure that the levels where yeah, it should be. So per their recommendation from Chase Bay's, halfway up the reservoir is full for this system. So we're just going to make sure that we got it not over full so that way it's not blowing out power steering fluid everywhere. So got the level is right about here. That's about halfway. 
All right. I can screw this on. Right or no? Yeah. 